Hello, and we are back. I'm Nikki, and I'm filling in for Mr. Paul Herring. We are doing Meet the Candidates. Tonight, I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Jerry Preston, who's running for 7th Ward City Council. How are you tonight, Jerry? Great, Nikki. Glad to be here. Thank you. Can you start off by telling the people a little bit about yourself? Well, I've been a resident of the 7th Ward for almost 17 years now, having lived in the same house on Pearson Street since I first moved to Flint. I came to Flint become, to become the president of the Flint Area Convention Bureau and held that position for 15 years. And now I do a lot of independent consulting for convention and visitors bureaus all over the world. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit about your educational background? Well, I'm a graduate of Central High School, not in Flint, but La Crosse, Wisconsin. Attended University of Wisconsin, and I also attended University of Michigan in Dearborn, uh, working on th those kind of activities that were good for my career at the time. I ended up uh, really learning a lot about electronics in the Army in the, in, when I was uh, in the service. Okay, and is this your first time running for City Council? This is the first time I'm running for any public office in the state of Michigan. I did run for a public office in, in Quincy, Illinois, and I was elected a park commissioner. We had park commissioners there, and so I did get elected to a public office there. Okay, so you're running for 7th Ward. What geographical area is that? It's primarily downtown east of Saginaw Street all the way over to uh, to Dort Highway and then the little section shuts out into uh, Central Avenue or okay. Central Street. And can you let us know what your idea of what a Flint City Council does? Well, one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about in the city of Flint is that we need to somehow make the city more attractive for residents and businesses. You know, some of the things that's happening right now are increases in water rates, increases in taxes, increases in, in everything but property taxes, I think are, are causing residents to leave the city of Flint, those that can do. And the same with businesses. And we've got to figure out ways to make the city more attractive to businesses and to residents so that we can create jobs. I mean, even if there were a couple thousand jobs that magically occurred in the city, I'm concerned that those residents may not want to live in the city because it's not an attractive place to be. Exactly. In your area, what do you feel is the biggest problem? Well, uh, one of my concerns is the fact that we're using community block grant funds improperly. The idea of using over $800,000 of community block grant funds to tear down Genesee Towers, I think, is wrong. That's a commercial venture, and it should be paid for by commercial activities. And those block grant funds should come into my neighborhood and your neighborhood to help clean up the blight and, and fix up those neighborhoods. Exactly. There is a lot of blight that's out there. So, with that being said, you know there is a $19 million deficit, and you mentioned the pipeline and all of that. Do you feel like that pipeline is going to help well, decrease? I've got a concern about the pipeline. It seems like the reason we're putting the pipeline in is because of the cost of the water that Detroit is, is charging us. And yet, as I look at my water bill, and I use one unit of water because I'm single, I live by myself, so I use one unit of water a month, the minimum you can use. My bill is $66.10. Of that bill, only $7.50 is for water usage. Now, if all of that's being given to the city of Detroit, and I don't think that's the case, my bill would only go down by $7.50 if Detroit gave us free water. And so I'm not sure that that's the reason to build a pipeline. Now, don't get me wrong. There may be good reasons from an industrial standpoint to have unprocessed water available to industri for industrial purposes in our area. So there may be a reason to do it, but I think we're kind of giving residents some false hope if they think their water bill is going to change dramatically when we have the pipeline in place. Exactly, exactly. Why do you feel like the city finances are in the shape that they are in? Well, obviously those in the past have not been good custodians of the money. Mm -hmm. And I think there have been a lot of well, what I'd like to say are cozy deals that have gone on in the, in the city, and, and this is just not right. You know, I, I, I have no employer here. I'm an independent consultant. I have no family here. And so one of the things that I can do is work with the other council members to ensure that we don't have any of these cozy deals going on, that every dollar we spend is appropriate. We've got to bring this city back to basics. We've got to get back to the basic services of fire, police, and safety, and, 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 and garbage pickup. Uh, we, 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 we can't continue to do some of these programs that are feel-good programs that, frankly, don't bring the city back to basics. And then once we have the city back to basics, then we can look at the new master plan. You know, there's a big community effort to build the new master plan and put together the master plan. And again, once that master plan is together, to work with the mayor and the council. And one of the things I, 
I recognize is that I've got to be able to count to five. Me and four others have to be in agreement on something or nothing gets done at the council. Exactly. So you can't be a lone ranger at the council. You, you, you can't have just lone ideas. You've got to work with the mayor and the council to move forward on the master plan. Speaking of getting back to the basics and the mayor, we have an emergency manager. How do you feel about that? How does the city get to the point where they have to have an emergency manager? Well, unfortunately, the city got that way. And I think, as I said before, I think some of my predecessors were not very good custodians of, of the funds that were available. I mean, these are the people's dollars. And part of my frustration is, say what you want about Genesee Towers. Genesee Towers, for unfortunate circumstances, ended up being owned by the people of the city of Flint. For the emergency financial manager to sell that building for a dollar and then give $800,000 of community block grant funds to that business enterprise to, to tear it down or do whatever they're going to do is wrong. All public assets need to be put up to auction. That's the law. And that way the city gets the very best bang for the buck, so to speak, by putting things up for auction. Maybe it was only worth a dollar, but we don't really know that if we didn't put it up for auction and ask others to bid on it. Mm -hmm. And that's my concern. Okay. What do you feel the city of Flint really needs? What do you feel as an upcoming candidate for the Flint City Council you can help the city do? Well, as I said, I, I think I need to work with the other council and the council members and the mayor to move the city back to basics. Once we're in basics, then start looking at the master plan and pick those items that we can afford to do in the master plan. Again, working in concert with the council and the mayor to make it all come together. You know, the mayor can't do it alone. A council member can't do it alone. It requires the entire group working together. And frankly, you know, the council is a check and balance on the mayor and his administration, and I think they have not done a good job of that. Being the right check and balance is, is the right thing to do. I think that the mayor has some great ideas. It's just a matter of pulling things together and making sure we make it happen. So basically, everything is not finalized by the city council. It has to go through the mayor? Well, well, generally, the mayor comes up with a, a program. I mean, he's the one that prepares the budget, mm -hmm. and the council approves the budget or rejects the budget and re redoes the budget, for example. Uh, the council doesn't prepare the budget. You know, it's the mayor that does it now. Don't get me wrong. The council's there and responsible for monitoring the budget, making sure that the funds are spent the right way, and, frankly, approving the budget to start with. So it, it, it requires a concentrated effort. It requires teamwork. Okay. Can you let us know what qualifies or what you believe qualifies you over the other candidates running in your ward? Well, the experience and longevity. I, I've managed nonprofit organizations and for-profit organizations. For 15 years, I brought the budget of the Convention and Visitors Bureau in, in the black. Uh, when, when I left the Convention and Visitors Bureau, it had a substantial fund balance and owned building outright. Uh, these are the kinds of things that I think good financial and, and fiscal responsibilities requires of a city council member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you let us know what do you feel about public safety? Well, obviously it's the number one issue in the city of Flint. Uh, public safety has to be the primary uh, goal of the administration and of the council to ensure that the residents are safe. That's part of what I said. We, make, we need to make this city more attractive for business and residents, and public safety fits both of those sides of that equation. I don't think businesses are going to locate here and residents don't want to move here without good public safety. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of campaigning, um, how are the city council's campaigns funded? Well, my campaign, I've had a fundraiser, a, a, a typical process. I've had a fundraiser, raised a little bit of money. We've got a very austere campaign going. I use plain one color literature and not, not two color literature. I don't even have a picture of my literature because <laughs> it, it costs too much. Mm -hmm. But uh, trying to get the word out to people in the ward. And then I'm out knocking on doors, talking to people. I mean, that's the best way to do it is talk to people. Right. Are you going to have a campaign headquarters? Well, my home. Uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the location uh, of the Friends of Jerry Preston. The campaign is, is my home, so I work out of my house. Okay, so speaking with you tonight, it sounds like you are willing to get in there and work with the other council members to work on not just your ward, but other wards. The whole city has to come together under the master plan. And, and I don't think you can uh, hold one ward up above the others. You've got to work on it all at the same time and figure out how to, how to solve the issue. And, and I've got the time to do that. As I say, I'm not employed. I do a little consulting work at 
some convention bureaus around the world, uh, but I've got the time to serve the council and, and try and pull the city back together. I've lived here 17 years. I think I owe it to the community to help pull it back together. Okay, okay. Me personally, I believe in keeping things fresh and brand new. Can you let me know what you plan to do? Um, uh, hopefully I get elected. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing, I, I want to work with the other council members. And then third, we need to look at the master plan and start picking those items that we can afford to do. That's what's going to be new for the city. The city hasn't had a master plan on, I think, it's 60 years now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the, that's the process because that's what the residents want. The residents put that plan together. And it shouldn't be about me. It should be about the residents and what the residents want. Exactly. Well, we're about to wrap it up here in a minute. Is there anything else you would like to say? Nothing other than I, I believe that I'm the best candidate, obviously, for the seventh award. I've got the experience, I've got the time, and I've got the stamina to go ahead and help the city get back to where it belongs. We need to get back to basics. Once we get the city back to basics, then we can start rebuilding the city. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Well, thanks for having me. It's been a, a good time to be with you, too, Nikki. Thank Alrighty. you. Alrighty. Uh-huh. We'll be back in a moment.